everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be creating a simple face in our art journal as part of my 100 day project. So I'm starting off in my Dina Wakely um, denim journal. You see I've already got some um, paint on the page and I'm just painting out some extra. So I'm starting off with Sedona, I had some magenta in there, going in some ruby. Um, I'm having a love affair with these colours at the moment. I'm using them a lot on pages sure there's something to it <laughs> going back in with some magenta just to add some pink in uh, it's funny how these sort of two pages I've actually found in this journal I don't well subconscious who can tell but um, a lot of my pages are sort of monochromatic working together so you can see I've got a lot of pink on the other page and this sort of ready pink page works together and I've got another page further back in the journal where I've sort of got um, blues on both sides of the page so um, it's obviously a theme I'm working on at the moment. So I've just gone in, I added a little bit of blushing which ties in with that Sedona colour. Um, so I've got this really warm background that I'm going to be working with. So I knew that I wanted to use one of my new stencils on this page um, which is a large full-size stencil from um, Janine Oliver from Stencil Girl. She's done this huge range of face stencils which if you follow my channel for a while you would know that I obviously love faces. I love face stencils. Um, I use them an awful lot and they're a really great way to get a really um, good focal image in your page really really quickly because i knew i was going to put this large stencil over the full, full page i did want to add some sort of mark making into the background but i wanted it to be subtle which is why i haven't actually pulled out my paint pens i just wanted something to blend in so i'm using my archival inks in similar tones and just putting some mic making stamps in the background so not really thinking about where they're going or if they're going to be on people's faces I just wanted to put some sort of extra texture onto my page so to speak um, to make it a little bit interesting to show that there's something going on in the background um, some of my inks are working better than others so showing up better than others so you know I've got these odd patches where you can sort of see things really clearly and other patches where you can't really see anything going on. So this is the stencil I am talking about. It's one of a series. Um, I think this one's called Thoughtful Girl. Um, if you go to the Stencil Girl site you will certainly find them. And I'm using Night to stencil with. So Night is a really deep um, indigo-y blue colour. It's got a slight purple tone to it. Um, but it's fab because it's not as harsh if, as black. If I put black on this, I would have this just really harsh drawing on my page um, that would be really hard to work with to sort of blend into the background. Whereas by using the blue, um, I can soften it off a little bit. I've got a softer image on the page. So you can see it transfers the stencil really, really easily. Um, it's really, really important, especially with really thin lines like this stencil, that you have barely any paint on your um, sponge as you're stenciling. You'll notice on my glass mat, you know, I pound it out a little bit as I'm going just to make sure that it's, um, you know, I've got as little paint on my page as possible. So all I've done is I've gone in with an Inktense pencil, which is in the indigo as well. It, the colour sort of matches up really, really well with the um, the night paint. And I've just scribbled over the lines that are already on the stencil. So I'm not even sort of drawing, well, I have drawn in some of my own lines. Um, you'll see that on the other side with some hair in a minute. Um, but basically I'm just using the lines that are there and I'm flooding the area with water and just letting the ink do what it does. It just wants to flow naturally where it needs to go. And it just gives you some really, really subtle shading. Now, one thing that I did have to stop and think about a little bit with this image was um, the face in particular, what was happening with the eyes. Um, in some stencils for eyes, it's quite easy to work out what's happening. In others, it's a little bit more complicated. And this was one of the slightly more complicated ones. You can sort of see me looking a little bit at where am I actually going to put in the whites of the eyes. 
putting in the whites of the eyes I find personally really really important because it suddenly makes the whole thing read as a face so you can see I tentatively put in some lines I noticed that my left eye was a little bit um, smaller than my right eye so I just sort of balanced it up a little bit one of the really really important things apart from putting the whites around the eye is to put the catch-alls in the eye because that's what sort of brings the, the image to life a little bit once I'd done that I was finding again easier sort of to work on the face so you can see here I've put a little bit of extra shading around the nose to make it more nose shaped um, a little bit around the eyes to darken it up so you know some of it is intuitive um, have a look use some references around you know look at a magazine of how where the sort of shading is um, I recommend uh, what do you call them makeup tutorials are really good for for highlights and um, contours if you need to know where to put the shadows in but you know this stencil is so well drawn that where you've got the dark bits is where the shadows are going to be so you really don't need to add any extra in unless you want to get really really fancy with it um, I just drew some extra hair on the right hand side to try and sort of even it out a little bit um, which I liked but you certainly don't have to do that I was also sort of looking at this area on her dress trying to work out you know what it was and that's a good thing about these stencils is it can be whatever you want it to be so I chose to sort of think of it as um, a lace collar and sort of the front of um, a shirt down the front bottom and the jacket going off so I'm just adding in some extra detail with my white paint pen and you can sort of see the white helps to really sharpen up that image makes it ble oh, not blend in sorry it certainly doesn't make it blend in it makes it stand out so I'm just adding in around all those areas the white and putting in the little pinstripe to make it look like a more sort of Victorian-esque type garment um, you know this is all subjective <laughs> you can do whatever you want with it basically I found that it was a little bit too white so I've just gone back in sort of around the chin area to darken up a little bit and again add in some water good thing about the intense pencils is um, if you do need to sort of wipe it away while it's still wet you can um, however they do become permanent after they're dry which is unlike if a Stabilo Woody for example what I'm doing with the um, pink pencil is a Stabilo Woody that you know if you put enough water on it you can actually wipe it away whereas with the ink tents once it's it's dried it, it does it's like an ink it stains into the page so just be aware um, they're fantastic pencils they work pretty much the same but one's permanent so if I go back and re-wet that a few days later it's not going to move whereas if that was a Stabilo pencil and I went back and re-wet it it would mo still move the final thing I'm adding onto the page is um, some words and I chose this from Adina Wakeley's stamp set which is I am a I am a voice not an echo yeah that's it I was wondering if I am an echo not a voice but that wasn't right and I'm just going with my black pen to go over the top of it now I don't tend to very often stamp straight onto a page of my journals particularly not in this journal as the um, texture of the paper is quite um, not rough but it, it, it does have a texture to it so that's why I went over with the black pen just to fill it in and then I outlined it with the white again again just to sort of help pop it out from the background but these full face stencils are a fantastic way to get a focal image on your page really easily and they're also really great for sort of developing your drawing skills a little bit or your shading skills because you don't have to draw out a face every time you can experiment on something that's already drawn for you and it's already got the shading in there for you so you can just add your extra little bits and pieces so I hope you found that useful and um, check out the link below for um, the stencil girl website and until next time bye for now